early 2010s for Capcom was it was easily the worst. Yeah, that's funny. It's because it was honestly the best and the worst because they were releasing a shit ton of fighting games, but they just didn't give a. F so they released like five or six fighting games in like less than a year. Not even kidding you. That's not even a joke. And then the Street Fighter 4 DLC stuff. The fact that Ultimate Marvel 3 came out. And guess what, chat? You couldn't upgrade, even though you could upgrade Street Fighter 4. It was truly scummy, right? It was some insanely scummy shit. Inafune left October 2010. So that makes sense. This was like the transition period, right? This was the trend, like, because Inafune was their lead business guy, right? He was like their, their their main business guy. And some some shit went down with him, so he was gone. And then in the transition period where they were trying to figure out how do we, so we don't have our lead business guy, we got new business guys, and they were just trying to milk shit like super hard but yeah marvel 3 ha marvel 3 and a lot of fighting game stuff fell prey to it because mvc3 if you wanted to upgrade to ultimate marvel 3 you couldn't you had to go to the store and buy ultimate marvel 3 for 40 bucks there was no upgrade path it was super scummy people were pissed man i, I ultimate marvel 3 is looked upon as being a uh, a very bright spot in capcom fighting game history right a very huge bright spot Guy probably wanted to meet their new KPIs. Yes, exactly. They wanted to like live up to what they were expecting from their previous business dudes. It pissed everybody up. Nobody, no, everybody was fucking mad when the Ultimate Marvel 3 came out. It was announced like only a few months after the initial game was revealed. It came out in February and it was announced in Comic-Con, so like July. And then it came out in November. It was rough, man. No upgrade path, nothing. You just had to buy the game over again for a little bit cheaper. Street Fighter 4 eventually got an upgrade path to Arcade Edition. But that's the thing is that I think earlier in that year, I think actually in 2011, Arcade Edition came out and it had an upgrade path. You know, I think it did. No, it was super that did. And you're right. It was super Street Fighter 4 that had no upgrade path. You had to, you had to buy the game like it was, you know, Street Fighter 2 Turbo. Yeah. You're right. You had to buy Super Street Fighter 4. That's what I'm thinking of. People are very nostalgic about that era, but... That era for Capcom genuinely sucked. I, I would say that was like the darkest time to be a Capcom fan in general was the early 2010s. But the nice part is that it, it led to a couple of frustrating years as well, especially with Street Fighter V tanking as much as it did at the start. It led to a few frustrating years of Capcom stumbling around trying to become like a company that people like again. Because before that, right, in late, late 2010s, Capcom was known as Cap Gods, right? That was, that was the interpretation of a lot of people around that time frame. Like the community interpretation was like the Cap God time frame, uh, late 2000s, uh, like 2007-ish to 2000, like Devil May Cry 4 and Resident Evil 5 and a lot of those games people really liked. They, they were Cap Gods around that time frame. And then they've turned into Crapcom through the mid to half of the 2010s, like 2010 to 2015-ish. And then they really grew an, another head on their shoulders um, hard, like really hard in 2016, 2017. Pretty much the beginning of the return of Capcom was Resident Evil 7. Resident Evil 7 was the turnaround. RE5, did that suck? No. RE5 is not a bad game at all. RE5 is a great game. It's just not much of a Resident Evil game. It's honestly one of the best co-op games there is. Uh, but it's it's a it's a big, it's a big jump from what even RE4 was. RE5 sucks solo, but it's a great game. So anyway, like what were the games that happened around that time frame? DMC was was one of those examples, right? DMC was a good game, but it pissed a lot of people off. Mega Man Legends 3 was announced and then canceled. Um, Resident Evil 6 was Resident Evil 6. Dead Rising series was sort of getting like just pumped out at that point games like weird games like dark void and lost lost planet lost its identity and became dead space it was very friggin weird man and then weird games like asura's wrath came out right in between that time frame and just pissed everybody off it was a rough time for capcom around that time frame it didn't pick up until truly resident evil 7 and then after resident evil 7 i i, I still will never forget e3 2018 so I'm in like, I'm like in Capcom's booth in 2018 with like Kenny Omega and like a lot of just diehard Capcom fans, right? Monster Hunter World. Yeah, when was that? That was 2017 Capcom E3. Yeah, that was also a great year as well. Their, their entire booth was littered with Monster Hunter World stuff. And guess what? That was Monster Hunter World and Marvel Infinite. That's what it was. 2017 was MVCI and... 
Monster Hunter World Capcom. So they were still doing a lot of shit, right? MVCI was pissing people off. It was, it's, it's a little blurry about which was what was their big, um, their big focus around that time frame. But yeah, like a ton of games, right? A ton of games that had a variety of uh, perception to the audience. I think Marvel Infinite was their one big stumble, but everything else, like RE7, Monster Hunter World, Mega Man 11, Resident Evil 2 Remake, Devil May Cry 5, even RE3 to an extent, right? Most of these games were able to hit with the audience. RE3 still obviously was potentially a, a blunder, but the majority of these games led to like the, the new, what, what is now considered the greatest era of Capcom ever in terms of business, right? Probably not to us because we still think of like the Nintendo, Super Nintendo arcade era of Capcom, like the biggest glory shit. That's like the most glorious to us. But in terms of what Capcom is as a company and how much they became globally aware, uh, that era for Capcom was nuts. Like they truly became huge. They had their best selling game of all time with Monster Hunter World, Resident Evil 2 Remake reviewed incredibly well, DMC5 reviewed incredibly well. They all sold better than almost any entry in the series. They all became like, you know, top 10, like huge selling games for the company ever. And yeah, they, they were back, man. And now they it brought them back other small titles like Mega Man 11, Ghosts and Goblins. Like a lot of stuff is coming back that are smaller releases, which is really cool. That's actually awesome that we got a new Ghosts and Goblins game this year. Is it really up my alley? It's not, but it's, it's badass to see that that's something that was executed well and was a pretty damn good game. Weirdly, uh, it's kind of hard to see where the future of Capcom is going, however, it could be good, you know? Sunbreak might be really another a great expansion similar to how Iceborne was and potentially around E3 timeframe, even though there might not be an E3, um, there might be some pretty huge announcements for Resident Evil related and Street Fighter related. This would be the time frame, right? This is like, the time frame is now. Street Fighter V is done. The only reason there was more content for Street Fighter V is because Street Fighter VI was getting delayed. And we already heard that there were some development issues with Street Fighter VI in the background. But yeah, Capcom's got a lot of, lot of other stuff in the background, you know? We got Dragon's Dogma potentially could have a sequel. Resident Evil 4 Remake is a high likelihood. All that kind of stuff. So that's where we're looking at Capcom right now. I think it's very, a very hopeful, right? Very hopeful future for uh, where their next big fighting game will go. And it's been a long time, dude. It's been a, it's been 10 years that we've gone where Capcom hasn't essentially stumbled over themselves for their big release fighting games. They took their audience for granted. That's all it was. MVCI, uh, Street Fighter Cross Tekken, Street Fighter V took for granted the audience that Marvel vs. Capcom 2 and 3 and uh, Street Fighter 4 had built. They thought they could do whatever and people would buy it or people would put up with some crazy shit and buy extra DLC, but people didn't. People turned on them real fast. Long story short, Capcom has not built any goodwill with their fighting game division until like the past year, really. Like the past year of Street Fighter 5 where they started doing those broadcasts and presentations and they were showing off and actually discussing the future of the game and giving us sneak peeks at what's going on once that started happening that was like the first time in a long time there was a genuine large amount of really good positivity about a, a capcom fighting game and that's the that's the that's the kind of energy they need to carry into the next game it really is